considerable mass. But they are so large that their gravity is very feeble. Any decrease in size would be met by an increase in gas pressure that would cause a cloud to re-expand. And here's Hans Alvin, Nobel Prize winner, NASA, says, There is general belief that stars are forming by gravitational collapse. In spite of vigorous efforts, no one has yet found any observational indication of confirmation. Thus, the generally accepted theory of stellar formation may be one of a hundred unsupported dogmas which constitute a large part of present-day astrophysics. The observed evidence clearly supports we don't know how stars form by natural processes. There's no one has ever seen a star form. Anybody who makes the claim they have seen a star, seen a star form must be very old because it would take thousands of years for this thing to happen. And finally, here's a couple more astronomers wrote in Science Journal. Despite numerous efforts, we have yet to directly observe the process of stellar formation. The origin of stars represents one of the fundamental unsolved problems of contemporary astrophysics. But now let's go back to our facts on file dictionary of astronomy. Again, we got the word facts in there. It's got to be true. And this is what they're teaching out of there. Stars are formed by gravitational collapse of cool, dense gas and dust clouds. Isn't that incredible? They can sit there and make that statement with no observation, no observable evidence, but yet they continue to make that statement. That is forcing faith onto the public. But notice what they say a little further down. There are problems, however, in, in initiating the collapse of a gas cloud. It resists collapse because of, firstly, its internal motions and heating effects of nearby stars. Secondly, the centrifugal support due to rotation. And thirdly, the magnetic field pressure. In other words, what they said so far is they believe stars are forming this way, even though all the evidence says no. What a strong belief system you have to have to accept evolution. And then they conclude with this. In a massive, dense cloud shielded by dust, it is, notice this word, believed that collapse can be triggered when the cloud is slowed on passing through the spiral density wave pattern of our galaxy. The whole idea of star formation is based on belief, not observable science. But yet, that is being passed off in our classrooms as science. Why should we accept somebody else's belief when we already have a belief system? Why should our students be forced into learning one particular belief system when there are many belief systems out there? Because they're being held captive by something called evolution and the proponents of evolution. Oh, but wait a minute, Mike. What about these star nurseries out there? What about these great big clouds of gas and dust out there, such as the Eagle Nebula, that great picture we saw in the newspaper and press called Star Nurseries. These great big nebula out there with these big fingers, dense clouds of fingers pointing up there, and these bright spots in there. Aren't those star nurseries, aren't, isn't that evidence that stars are being formed right there in front of our eyes? No, it is not. You see, once again, we're not being told all the information. We're being told just selected information because some people want everyone to believe in evolution, not science. You see, what causes this? We have these big dark nebula, gas and dust clouds out there. Then we have these other kinds of clouds out there called emission nebula, very bright. And when these two kinds of nebula collide, they force these great big fingers, dark nebula, fingers, gas and dust to spiral up there. And you see these very hot, bright spots at the fingertips here as we saw in the Eagle Nebula. Now, are those stars forming? Well, not by any evidence we know, because when we take a look at those temperatures, and we try and measure the temperatures there, well, we find out these bright spots, the temperature is about 10,000 Kelvin. That is so hot, it could never collapse in. It will have to expand. And sometimes what we're seeing out there, we look out there and we say, oh, we didn't see this bright spot before. Now there is one. Well, the reason we're seeing one there now, we didn't see it before, is this 
gas and dust cloud is expanding and we're now being able to see areas we couldn't see before because this gas and dust cloud, the thick gas and dust cloud, has hidden it for a while. And it took time for it to expand out. So are stars forming there? Not by any observable evidence we know of. For example, the Horsehead Nebula in Orion. Images, this was one time thought to be a star nursery. But just recently, images taken by the European Southern Observatory, a very large telescope in January 2002, verified this structure is not collapsing and forming stars. It is expanding. The same thing we believe is happening in the Eagle Nebula and all these other so-called star nursery clouds. So we need to examine all the evidence. But that's not allowed in many of our schools today because we are being captured by a faith called evolution. Well, I like to use numbers here. I like numbers. What I want to do is see if the evolution model really holds up against numbers. Star formation in time. Now, according to the astrophysicists, their calculations are that there are about 100 billion galaxies in our universe. About 100 billion galaxies. Now, they also estimate that each one of these galaxies, on the average, has about 200 billion stars. Now, 100 billion galaxies, that equates to about 10 to the 11th power scientific notation. And 200 billion stars equates to about 2 times 10 to the 11th power scientific notation. Now, if we take this universe to be 20 billion years old, and that's much older than they believe it is today, because the current belief is about 13.5, 13.7 billion years. But we're going to give them 20 billion years. And if we put all this into a formula, 100 billion times 200 billion divided by 20 billion that would come out to be one trillion stars forming every year for 20 billion years. That's a lot of stars forming out there. Well, let's bring that number down a little bit to something we can understand a little bit better. That would equate to about 2.7 billion stars forming every day for 20 billion years. Well, let's bring that number down. That would be 31,700 stars forming every second for 20 billion years, and we can't even observe one of these stars forming. The numbers simply do not add up. 31,700 stars every second. We should be able to look out there every second and see stars forming, but we don't. So what's happened here? The numbers simply don't add up for the evolution model. So here's the latest claim. The claim now is that during the initial stages, right after the Big Bang, maybe millions of years or just a billion years, is when almost all the stars formed. They're trying to hide their evidence now. They're making a claim without being able to present any evidence. They're just saying, oh, they all formed billions of years ago, so they're not forming today like they did. Folks, that's not science. That's called a belief system. We need to keep science to the science classroom. Prentice Hall, Earth Science, 2001. Are textbooks correct? Well, here's what they're teaching our youth. A nebula is a large amount of gas and dust spread out in an immense volume. All stars begin their lives as parts of nebula. Then they say, gravity can pull some of the gas and dust in a nebula together. The interacting cloud is then called a protostar. A star is born when the contracting gas and dust become so hot that nuclear fusion starts. Now, is this statement based on any observable science, or is it merely based on a belief in evolution? Do you see what's happening in our school system today? How in the world are our youth ever going to have a chance to learn the true science if they're not willing to teach it? Why can't the evolution model simply teach all the science and let students do critical thinking come to a conclusion? Why must evolution consistently give misleading information or leave out information called deception by omission? You see, any model that's going to call themselves scientific or even call themselves a theory has to be able to present all the scientific information. If they're unwilling to do that, they no longer qualify as a theory or as science. So what we're seeing here in our textbooks today is something called 
deception by omission. They are unwilling to allow our students today to see all the science. Now, just recently, just recently, 2003 here, they sent up another satellite to measure the background radiation of the universe. Now, what they're measuring is something called the cosmic microwave background radiation. Now, what we mean by that, let me give you an illustration, this background radiation. You have a fireplace, and you've had your fireplace going for 